Hi guys, Paul here at Radio Shop Pickups in South Wales and welcome to Radio Shop Review number 10. And if you enjoy these sort of roundup videos that we do, then please hit subscribe. So in this one, we've got a lot of information coming up, a lot of sort of little features, a lot of different things. And the idea of the show is that we just put a bit of a sort of fun packed show together of guitar related stuff and also music from people who actually use us in their guitars, okay? Coming up in this show, we've got some news from us, some, some pickup news, and also about Luthia that we've just added to our lineup of sort of Luthia's we use this, that's gray guitars. We've got kind of a little look back at the Chris Buck set, which is two years old. Okay, so it's a bit of a happy birthday there. Um, we've got information on the WSR Workshop Special Run number three. Um, we're gonna give you some information and some clips as well from the Lickloft who've done an awesome video for us. And we've got some music from Jan and also from Michael in Switzerland. So lots coming up in the show today. Now, the, the biggest news really for, that I want to start the show with is that we've added and we're going to be working with a new Luthier, which is Grey Guitars of London and a really impressive young company. Um, Thomas is actually, uh, Thomas Gray, who actually makes the guitars there. He makes handmade, everything is handmade and it's all sort of strapped tele variants, but with some really original features as well. And he's got a growing list of big people who actually use him, like Graham Coxon of Blur and also Tim Renwick of Pink Floyd. So we're really, really chuffed to be working with Thomas and we're especially going to be doing a lot of sort of jazz master stuff. And also, he is making a guitar for Chris Buck. So hopefully we're going to get some little bits of footage from Thomas just showing that that build as it progresses over the next few months. But we're really, really chuffed to announce that we're working with Grey Guitars of London. If you haven't checked them out already, head over to their website and I'll put a link below in the description area. Um, the next thing will be the Chris Buck set, which, as I said, just now it's two years old and it's been an amazing two years really. Uh, we launched the set and it was an idea that we had that to create a set that would actually be suited to Chris's playing. Um, it's got the reduced wax pot in, which a lot of you seem to know about already, but basically that's something that no one else is doing. And contrary to popular belief, um, I read recently that we must be just dipping it in, wa in wax for less time, but there's actually a lot more to it than that. So we've hit upon a way of creating this pickup that has got an inner coil, which is completely unpotted. And we've got a very special way of doing that. Okay. And that's become our best selling set. And lots of people have bought that set and absolutely love it. And I'm going to show you I'm just a little bit of reminiscing really, because we made a video with the, the awesome Chris Watkins, where he came up to the workshop and we did some footage with Chris and some amazing playing with Chris. And he also did a bit of an interview with us describing how we'd gone about making the set. So have a little look. <laughs> Growing up, I don't think I ever quite appreciated the uh, the effect that pickups have on a guitar's tone. It's incredibly obvious in retrospect, but kind of of all the things that you kind of experiment with and play with, it was the kind of three sets of magnets that never even factored into my thinking as something that might actually kind of have a massive impact on a guitar's sound. About a year or so ago, um, the guys at Radio Shop um, invited me along to try a couple of different pickups. and. It was only really when they started to kind of dissect the process of what actually went into making pickups that you start to realise that the smallest of details, the smallest of changes can make an absolutely massive impact in how they sound, whether it's whether it's the amount of wines, whether it's the type of wire, it's all this kind of stuff that again I'd never really considered that kind of has a massive impact on their tone. Radio Sharp is a, is a two-man operation, although you'd be forgiven today for thinking there were three of us. But what we do that's, we like to think that that's different to what other people do, is that we go into everything into the micro details. Um, we put hundreds of hours of, of sort of quite scientific at times experimentation into what we do and what effect it will have on the sound. We're not churning out pickups to an order of thousands, we're making each set that is ordered with as much care and attention to detail as possible to make sure that they sound great for, for all players. I went away with 
a couple of different sets of pickups, um, kind of with a bit of a kind of better appreciation of what could be done and what could be changed to kind of affect their tone. And came back with a few suggestions as to what I'd like to hear. Um, and I guess it's been a kind of a kind of constant progress over the past couple of months of what are now the kind of signature pickups. And the two years since that video has been made have absolutely flown by, so I can't believe that it's two years since we made that. I look a a little bit different, perhaps, yeah, a little bit older, I think, right. Moving on, now we've got some a little bit of pickup news then for you. Um, the first thing would be our workshop special run. So that'd be up to number three now. And number three is going to be three sort of limited sets of our Relic Strat sets, which are coming soon. You know, we're, we're constantly adding things to the lineup of what we do, and slowly the website catches up but we've actually got a relic line of, of pickups coming very soon. You can see uh, a couple of images on the screen of the Telecaster ones we did recently. And really this is kind of the brainchild of, of Dunny or Paul Dunn, who uh, a lot of you will be familiar with from our winding videos. And um, Paul is a chemist by trade. Okay, not the type who gives up pharmaceuticals, the other type of chemist. Okay, so he's been working on aging, lots of different things. And it's a really long process, but we will have three relic strat sets and with relic covers and you can see some of the processes on the screen now i don't know what he's up to really but he's putting something really special together so if you'd like to reserve one of those sets just get in touch with us um, another thing i've been working on is updating the website we're constantly telling people it's like kind of our excuse really which is like we're better at making pickups than we are making websites so sometimes we've added things to the lineup of what we do and the website takes a bit of time to actually catch up. I think it's reassuring that we're better at making pickups than making website, but the website looks nice, but there's a few additions that I'd like to do. I wanna add some HSS options because one of the things that we do all the time is HSS guards and it's, not, it's nowhere on the website. But if you want one in the meantime, just give us a shout via email and the, the normal ways. Um, you'll also see that I've added pictures of me and Paul, so you can see our ugly mugs on there for the first time as well. So um, you may have only ever seen the side of Paul Dunn's head as he's winding away or perhaps the back of his head, and that's what he looks like, so check it out. Uh, what else have we been up to this month? We've been doing a lot of sort of crazy repairs, really. I say crazy, but only one or two of them were a little bit different. We had a, a 1969 telly in for Rewind um, for a chap, another chap called Paul. And uh, we had a Joe Lana pickup, which is quite a strange one. I think it's an Eastern European guitar, quite a vintage guitar there. And we also had a single bobbin wall uh, pickup to do, which is basically it was a, a bass pickup, which has got eight bobbins, so uh, two for each string. And it's an individual pickup that needed to be rewound for a chap called Mike. And that was a, quite an interesting pro uh, project, really. I'm not sure if I would design a pickup like that in the future, but I don't know, it's an interesting idea. I think it could work better on bass than it would on, uh, on a six string, because you'd have you know, 12 bobbins, but perhaps with eight, I don't know, it kind of makes sense, but obviously wall are, are amazing, and the sound, I've actually heard one in person, the sound from the pickup that we were repairing the, the single bobbin for is incredible. So they're onto something, I know that. Um, next, we're gonna look at the Lickloft. Now, a few months ago, the Lickloft actually did a video for us, a review video on the Chris Buck set, and they made a better video than I could ever put together. And they've done the same again now for an ID Telecaster set. So Rich from the Lickloft took delivery of a set of ID Telecaster pickups. Now, and, and these boys pay for their pickups. It's not like an endorsement deal. They just make review videos basically. And if you haven't checked them out, head over to the Lickloft on YouTube because their videos are awesome. And I'm sure they're gonna be a massive hit in the future. They do sort of playing tips and also gear reviews as well. And they reviewed the ID Telecaster set and here are a couple of clips from that video, which are sound incredible. <laughs>
thank you so much to the guys there at the Lick Loft for sending those those clips over to us because uh, they just sound incredible. And as I said, better than any sort of playing that I can do as well. The, the playing is absolutely beautiful. And the next item I want to look at really is something for me. Now, my I'm, I'm aging, I'm afraid. Well, we're all aging, aren't we? But I'm reaching a bit of a milestone. I'm going to be 40 next year. And I thought I'd combine something uh, well, basically, I just wanted to make, have a really nice guitar to sort of celebrate that milestone, okay? And I don't know if you saw recently that we did a video where we did a, a tour with Richard Mayrick up in Abergavenny, and he's a maker of acoustic guitars, a hand maker, and I was absolutely knocked out by the workshop tour, and I just thought, I've got to have one of these. And I've wanted for a long time to have an OM. Uh, you may have seen, actually, that quite often I play Paul Dunn's OM, which is a Breedlove one, the amount of times I've tried to actually buy it off him and I was just trying a cheeky way like uh, oh you know you don't like this guitar that much do you you don't you don't really play it that much do you do you want to get rid of it and he's like no don't want to get rid of it so I've been trying to get that off Paul but it's not going to happen so I thought right I need to get an OM and what better way to celebrate my 40th next year which is in April than to get Richard to make me run. So I'm gonna be going up there next week. I've made some early decisions, like on the on the wood. I'm gonna go for Indian rosewood on the back and sides, and I'm gonna go for a Sitka spruce on the top, and it's gonna be an OM shape. And I'm gonna, I just wanna make a really subtle guitar, and it's hopefully gonna be ready in six months then, ready for my birthday. Um, but I've gotta go up and choose things like binding and, and all this sort of stuff. So I'm gonna, shoot a bit of footage and put some of that in the review because hopefully some of you will enjoy watching the development of that guitar. One of the things that I want to do is have some sort of thing um, showing you know, maybe my date of birth in a subtle way or something like that. I certainly don't want anything in blazing up the headstock or along the uh, fingerboard. I want everything to be really, really subtle. Um, but I'm thinking about maybe like in the sort of block in the center or maybe along the sort of binding in the middle. I don't know. I'm just thinking, what can I put in there to celebrate my birthday, which you would have to look for. You know, I don't want anything outwardly visible, okay? Um, when I spoke to Richard and said, I'm popping up next week to make the choices on binding, etc., he said, oh, that's great. You can choose your Indian rosewood back. I've got two for you to choose from. And you can also choose your Sitka spruce top. And I was just like, oh my God, I'm already there. All right, so I can't wait to go through these choices with Richard. Um, so you're going to see a bit of footage of that as we go through time. Now, we've got some music next, and this is from a, a chap called Jan Gutter in France, so merci à vous, Jan. And this is a bit of footage. Jan basically uses the Chris Buck set and our Radio Shop Classic P90, so he's got two sets from us. And the name of his band is Branson, and he's used both of those guitars on the video, and they put a song together called Over and Over, and I'll put some links below. And basically, it's a beautiful track, so just check it out.
a big thank you again, merci uh, Jan for sending that in. Really enjoyed that. And if you want to check out more of Jan's stuff, there's some uh, links below. And also Branson, you know, they are gigging, I believe it's in Northern France. And you know, if you're in Northern France and watching this, book them. They're an awesome band. Um, we've got a few more. I'm going to close the show in a minute with some mu music from, from Michael in Switzerland. Um, so we'll go through that in a second. But what I wanted to say was also we got some of the things we've got coming up on the Radio Shop Review and also on our channel. There's lots of videos being added all the time. The recent video I added was one of our base plates, our strap base plates. So check that out. There's a link coming up in a second. And that's one of the ways of adding base response to a bridge pickup on a strap. So if you haven't checked those out, maybe you've got a pickup that's a little bit lacking, head over to the video and it's easy to install one of our base plates and you'll see exactly how to do it there. We've got lots of stuff coming up on the channel. We're gonna be doing lots of things. I'm gonna be exploring actually um, parts casters. I'm gonna be doing a video soon talking about the, the value of your parts caster and what it might be worth after putting it together. I'm also gonna address a question soon, which a lot of people ask me is, after upgrading our pickups, should I keep hold of the stock pickups? So there's gonna be that sort of video. And in time, you know, I'm trying to get on to as much as I can with making pickups as well, but I'm gonna be doing Rosa versus Maple comparisons. I'm also going to be doing sort of body material like Alder versus Swamp Ash, those types of videos as well. So hopefully there'll be lots of interesting stuff. And I think me and Paul are gonna, we're gonna think about doing some sort of quite scientific videos to do with, um, pickup making as well. So you might see us don the lab coats, possibly in a jokey way, but in a semi-serious way as well. So there's lots of stuff gonna be coming to the channel. If you haven't hit subscribe, hit it now guys, because there's plenty of stuff that's worth watching coming up. And we're gonna close this Radio Shop review with some footage now from Michael in Switzerland. Now Michael is a teacher of guitar teachers. So you wanted me to point that out because he teaches guitar teachers how to teach guitars. Okay, and he's also got a, a band as well called Moe's Ant Hill. So they've got an album coming out early next year. And here's some of his playing, and I think he uses a Highway 1 Strat, so very much like Chris, and he uses the Chris Buck set. So thanks for watching the show, guys, and I hope you enjoy Michael's playing as he plays us out. See you soon. Mm -hmm.